Three. Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Porky here from Porky's Corner, the voice of hardcore boxing. But then again, you know that, don't you? Because that's why you've tuned in. Today, I'm joined by Rico, who co founded this channel with me in 2017, many moons ago. How are you doing, Rico? Good, mate. Welcome to the Blue Ribbon Boxing YouTube channel. <laughs> Blue ribbon. <laughs> what have you been up to? Oh, I just went for a walk, uh, chilling at home, watching lots of films. Uh, just let me call yeah. for you, mate. Bit of a walk, eh? Yeah, this morning. Just need to get out of the house, you know. It's um, otherwise you just end up staying in, and the week goes, and you haven't left the house. Oh, interesting. I was going to uh, take Rocky out this morning. We're well, he's on at Barbacoke, but it's a bit cold, so I'm going to take him when I've done this and uh, let him have a turnout on uh, 18th hole at local golf course. Well, I hope he don't try and shave him again, because last time that didn't go too well, did it? No, no. I've, uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to let him, have, let him have a long fur until about March. Just keep brushing him every day so he's not molting. But, uh, but yeah, I'll be taking him out later with Wellies on. Get him sludged up and like, he likes a good sludge up, then a hot bath. Yeah. And a penguin biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> so, hope you're well, mate. Uh, I can explain it. A lot been going off behind the scenes in boxing because there's no boxing on as such. Uh, what do you make about that situation with WBA, Rico? Uh, you're talking about the heavyweight... Uh, fight that was meant to happen between uh, Trevor Bryant and who was it, Char? I can't yeah. remember anymore. Yeah. Char. Or was it Bryant and Trevor, Bri Trevor Bryant, wasn't it? Yeah, it's it's just classic Don King because I, I he announced it on Twitter, right? Or he announced it and everybody would put out posters and he, and he said subject to, you know, these fights aren't guaranteed, but this will be on the card. And it yeah. true. So I think what he's doing is really just keeping his guys sort of seemingly active so if they can hold their WBA positions, that at some point he can um, cash them out against one of the big guys. Yeah. But these guys are not relevant. Trevor Bryant's not relevant, is he? Stavane's not relevant anymore. Who's Trevor Bryant beat? Who's he beat? No one, but he's, but he's climbed up the ladder quite well, right? He's the perfect guy for somebody like Fabian Wardley to be, right? Undefeated, yeah. number two ranked in a few years' time. That's kind of the type of guy that he should be facing. Emmanuel Chard's been muted around for Joshua for quite a while, hasn't he? And Fury as well and others. He's like the type of guy that he's fought a few good op uh, opponents. He's based in Germany. He's just there to wait for wait to be cashed out. And I think that kind of stuff in boxing is particularly harmful. So we have too many guys that are just waiting for the big payday. They aren't taking fights, aren't keeping active because the ranking system by the sanctioning bodies allows that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all true, Rico. It's all true. I agree with you. Uh well, the WBA is a joke, isn't it? It's always been a joke. I mean, WBC has been particularly a joke, but the WBA, does anybody take that belt credibly? No. I don't think they do, mate. I don't, I don't think... Uh, look, the WBA regular belt, it's all right if you've got another world title belt that's a genuine belt, isn't it? But if there's a super champion... It's, it's it's getting it's not going through the back door. It's going through the cat flap, isn't it? But isn't the regular belt effectively? It is like the number one mandatory position because that allows you to fight against the super champ. Or no, the... Uh, I don't know, but because if look, you can look at that belt, same as WBO and IBF. There's confusion. It's the, the telling promoters, managers, trainers, fighters, yeah, you're the world champion. And then when other people say anything about it, they just say, oh, he's an interim. And, and they're just playing everybody off everybody to get sanction fees. 
I mean, was Scott Quigg a world champion then? If we're going to argue about it, was Scott Quigg a world champion? Uh, probably not. Well, he was. Yes, he was. But was he seen as the, you know, was he seen as the best in division? No. And I think the thing about these world championship bouts is the company bodies have been smart and they've realised that TV companies and casuals latch on to the world champion status. So what they can do is they can create a number of different bouts so that promoters can put on shows and say to their TV companies and Sky that, look, we're putting on two world title fights or three world title fights when everybody in boxing knows this isn't really a world title fight or this guy will not be the best in division. So it just dilutes the product, doesn't it? When you have lots yes. of world champions, there's no incentive to actually fight the best because you can still make good money and you can headline cards under the guise of being a world champion without facing the best in division. Yeah. I do think a lot of people say, yeah, we should have one bout. And the reality is that's not going to happen. And also it's been going on for years that you haven't just had one bout, right? You've had... Yeah. Back in the old days, you'd have New York State Athletic Commission champion. You'd have all sorts of different bouts and trinkets. But at the very least, we should have four bouts for four governing bodies. So one each, and then you can have the ring magazine rather than diluting it by having interims, champion emiratus. What is that? I mean, you, you can lose a fight, but you can still be a champion. Well... If you click on the WBA interim, it, it, there's a there's a box that seem to think the WBA interim is the same as the regular, don't they? Yeah. But yet, when you're looking through rankings, they'll say they've got a super champion, a regular champion, and an interim champion. Then after interim, it goes intercontinental and continental. So it's really confusing. Why are people getting belts for being the sixth or seventh best in the division? I think the WBA are the ones that have rinsed it more than anybody. Do you agree? I agree. I mean, look, you've got Manuel Char as a champion in recess at the WBA. Can he call his Joshua fight at any point? Possibly. Manuel Char is a sparring partner for Tyson Fury, then Yui Fury, that's how good he is. Exactly. You know what I mean? And did he win? Did he win against Brian? I don't think they ever fought. That got cancelled, right? Oh, it's got cancelled, yeah. That yeah. Trevor Bryan's another love joy. Don King just slips him into rankings, doesn't he? A fighting stiffs. Well, he's been he's been in I think he's been top ranked for the last three, four years. And it's not like he's actually fought against anyone. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I think, no, I think Brian did win. Sorry, I got that wrong. I think Brian did hit win. He he stopped the vein, but they were meant to get, I think Char was meant to be in the fight. He was just a complete mess. But the types of guys, he hadn't fought for a good three years. Uh, Trevor Brian, I think he last fought against BJ Flores, a heavyweight, like yeah. in 2018 or something like that. So you can still hold your position without fighting for three years, which is crazy, isn't it? You might as well have been retired for three years. You might as well, aren't you? Yeah, and how old is Trevor Bryan, right? Must be like in his 30s, early 30s. Well, however old he is, you know he's getting shafted by Don King. Uh, you'll end up owing uh you'll end up owing 10 grand for the fight, right? <laughs> After all the expenses and everything else, Don says he still owe me 10, 10 grand. Hey, listen, mate. It wouldn't even surprise me if Trevor Bryan were paying to fight because that goes on in boxing, you know. I'm not going to mention any promoters' names, but fighters pay to fight. How bad is that? How bad it is happens, that? right? If you, if you can't sell many tickets, uh, that's what happens at small hall level. Could you see Kevin here, or uh, 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 anybody who we know, if we did anything with boxing, could you see us saying, you've got to pay to fight? Could you ever see me saying that? Could you? Oh, it's easier. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Well, you know, it's uh, you're going to have to pay to fight. What? What sort of sport are we involved in here? Paying to fight? But there's too many. The reason you end up paying to fight is there's too many boxers that are professional. 
right? You have a lot of these white collar guys turning over, getting three and zero records, and by the point they mates lose interest of watching them bashing up journeymen, they can't sell tickets, but they do for their ego. Like in no other sport, can you just decide that you're going to be a professional if you're a certain standard, and then people then you sell tickets, and because you can sell these tickets, you can perform up your call or you know. Donny Dome or somewhere like that. It, in boxing, there's no real system apart from, I mean, the board is incentivized by having as many license holders as possible, so there's no quality control. Like, do we need, you know, if you look at the small horse scene, how many of these guys are actually any good? Like, how many of these guys will go beyond, you know, can even compete at the area level? Not many of them, a handful. So, if you think about in boxing terms, if you're not, sorry, football terms, if you're not good enough to be a pro footballer, you're a semi-pro. So you do another job and then you box. Uh, sorry, you play football. And if you're below that level, then you drop out. If you're not good to be, if you're not good enough to be a semi-pro, you become an amateur. And in boxing, so if you can sell tickets, it's the promoters, in, you know, incentivized to just keep you fighting until you're 15 and 0 on the small hall scene just that you can sell those tickets, even if they know you're not good enough. Like there's no real quality control. And I think that's where the system doesn't really work because you don't have the best product, even a small hall. Like, why should I go to a small hall card? What seven fights where I already know which, you know, the, the A side is going to win all of these. Look, we can, whoever's, right, I can explain this. I'm not going to say any names because People will start going, fuck you, you've hammered me, said I'm shit. Well, I know fighters around here, right, who are garbage. They're not even white collar. They've got clothing lines. Clothing yeah. lines. Entourages, chiropractic, masseurs, strength and conditioners. I'm like, what are they doing? They're not even journeyman level, but they've passed a medical. And they want to be known as a boxer. But garbage, garbage, mate, garbage. And people, especially promoters, are giving these people slots because they sell tickets. And everybody in the industry has got their head in the sand. They're all going, oh, my God, what's going on here? They all know what's going on. Why well, does a few tickets? Whatever happened to talent? And the promoter getting himself out there and doing his job by promoting Whatever happened to that, eh? I, I like the, I think Terry's once mentioned this idea about having a set number of fights, but I like the idea of, because let's say you can have up to 20 fights, and if you, if you win the British, you can have 10 fights more, and if you get to European, you can have 10 fights more, sort of that European level or you know fringe world level so it could be a wba international so the most fights you could have is 40 in your career and if you get to world champion then you can have 10 more if you want to have 50 fights if you get to world champion you get to that 40 mark that means that nobody below british level could have more than 20 fights uh maybe Maybe that's a good idea, but it won't happen, will it? Because promoters control board and they control TV, don't they? No, but, you know, you've got guys like Jordan Gill. I mean, how many fights does Jordan Gill have? 18, 19? We quit in one of them. Exactly, but he's got 18, 19 fights and he's still learning. Like, why are you learning when you've got about 20 fights? There's too many of these guys learning in their 20th fight, they six, five, six years into their career. And they're still having learning fights. I mean, what have you been doing when you've been having 20 fights, you've been in gym most of your life and you're still learning on the job? At some point, they just need to be stepped up or go to uh, skid row, as my friend Porky would say. Listen, there's a lot of people heading for skid row. There's a lot of people, when fans are back, they're going to be stepping up two and three weight divisions because they've not been training. They've all you know, gone into depression mode and stuff like that. Mm. 
There's people coming back now who shouldn't be even near a ring, mate. Shouldn't be near a ring. But everybody wants to get a few quid and get a fight with these YouTubers, don't they? Yeah, uh, but I don't think... I don't think... Uh, you know, a lot of these people... If you think about boxing in the terms of... Let's say you make 30 grand a year, right? You get paid every month a certain amount. These boxers, at the lower levels, they might make, after everything, three, three, four grand a fight, right? After all the expenses, paying off everyone, if they're a decent ticket seller. So you fight twice a year, three times a year. You might come to 12 grand a year. Yeah. So what? So what are they actually doing? Like, how are you actually making any money if you a pro boxer and you make twelve grand plus a bit of money from sponsorship and other things? Let's call it fifteen, sixteen grand. At what point does it dawn on you that this is not really a career path? And a lot of these small hall guys that haven't been fighting over the last twelve months or so. You know, they need to get jobs and they probably have got jobs and they probably need to think to themselves whether getting back into boxing and being a full-time boxer with the track suits and entourage is worth it. And I think all small hall boxers should have a job until they get to a certain level where they can actually maintain their income. Even if that means training in the mornings and evenings, it's more sustainable because the money just isn't there in boxing beyond the top levels. Yeah, yeah. I see where you're coming from, Rico, yeah. I see where you're coming from. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the answer to, is to this. We've gone over this over and over again, but kids are getting paid 200 quid, 300 quid, 500 quid to go on shows. Some kids are paying to fight on shows just to get out and get up rankings. And I don't agree with it. I don't agree with that. There'll be none of that if I were in yeah. charge, mate. None of it. it won't, I won't allow it. I won't allow it, mate. I won't allow it one bit. But you get kids that don't sell tickets, but that's why we have promoters, because what is a promoter's job? It's to promote fights. And if the fighters can't sell tickets, they've got to advise the fighter how to sell tickets. You've got to lay the law down to them and say, look, you've got to do so many tickets, but... Kids can't be paying to go on shows. Promoters who put people on shows and tell them to pay for an opponent are shit houses. That's my opinion. They all know my opinion on it. You say what they want, kids shouldn't be going in that ring because if they drop dead and it comes out, well, they were having to pay to play. It just makes boxing look bad, doesn't it? Yeah, but what's a manager's job in that instance? Yeah. You know, if, a manager's, if a manager's accepting that they fight is going to pay, surely it's your job to manage that that doesn't happen. Otherwise, why are you getting your 20%? Is manager telling kid that they've got to pay to go on and is he getting some out of it? Perhaps. I mean, look, it happens. It happens. That was every show. People fighting for notes. Or people yeah, fight. Poor, it's poor management in that case. If you having to pay to get on, it's poor management. All, All right then. Management. All right then. This is why we have a board of control. What are they doing about it? What Nothing. are they doing about they it? Nothing. The, they get the they get they slice from the show, don't they? What are board of no control doing about it? Kids are fighting for free. What about them kids? I mean, what boxers out there, right, are going to go on a show, and if you say to them. Fight week, how much you get in? They go, I don't know, I'm getting looked after. We're going to see how show goes. They don't even know what they're getting. I thought we outlawed all that when Don King were doing that to Tim Witherspoon, didn't they? He didn't know mm -hmm. they were going against Frank Bruno, but that was 1986. So 35 years later, some promoters are saying to boxers, well, we'll see how our show does. No, that's no good. I mean, there's a, simple, good. there's a simple solution for that, which is... And then promoters know who they are. You know. There's a simple solution for all of this, which, which the board could do easily. Where the board, where you, the promoter submits a slip to the board, which says, this is how much everybody's getting paid on the show. And all the people's 
the fighters or the managers sign on behalf of them and say, we agree to this. This is how much we're getting for the show. And then all that money before the show goes to an escrow. It gets sent into an escrow to the board. And then the board distributes the money to the fighters. That way, there's transparency on how much everybody's getting paid. And that way, the board can pull up and say, how is, you know, how is this guy getting zero um, money for the show? He can't be. How is this guy paying? Yeah. It's yeah. that simple. I mean, look, there's there's loads of solutions for all of this stuff, but it's more about do people want to change the status quo? No, because everybody's getting they red buttered. Everybody's getting they checks on the side. Everybody's getting they hotels and they what is it whiskey and double coke and they smoke salmon and scrambled eggs. Yeah, you know, you know all these people, right, in border control. Hang on, let me just get my seat in position, right? All these people at the border control, right? They've had, they've had, they've had the noses in the trough, Rico. They've had the noses in the trough that that long now that they don't want to let go. You see where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping to change all that, and I hope that the British Boxing Board of No Control all retire and resign and let younger people come in and run it because when are these people going to jog on? They're all in the 70s, older than the hills. They're all in the 70s and they need to jog on. What's going older on? Older than Eddie Hills. They're older than Eddie Hills and he's 42, isn't he? <laughs> but these people have had the nose in the trough. They don't work. You no, know, it's not work what they do, just poncing about all day. The poncers, mate. There's too many poncers in boxing as it is. Without these poncers at the British Board of Control, yeah, that's what you are, poncers. And you know who you are. Robert Smith, Charlie Giles, Les Potts, ex-chief of police, all putting your expense sheets in, Sunday morning at hotels and that. You got it all figured out, aren't you, you poncers? So, what? okay. I mean, you've been calling the board for a while. What's your solution? Rip it all up and start again. I want them all okay. out. Okay. Oh, so Lord, you... God, listen to me. Let me tell you this before you start. No, no, no. I, I agree. With, I agree with you, Ross. Right. I agree with you. Well, listen but... to listen to this, and let me tell you this. You know, if you're, I can explain it. If you're John Gotti, right, mm -hmm. and you've got somebody in your crew taking a piss on all his friends to police, right, but you don't know who it is, you're going to have to root that person out. It's a bit like Alex Ferguson got rid of Paul Ince, didn't he? Do you know why? Mm -hmm. Because he came, became disruptive in changing them. He got rid of Roy Keane. You've got to get rid of them because a rotten apple will spread to other rotten apples. Now... The Boxing Board of Control, they've had the noses in the trough years. It's a closed shop. It starts off with one rotten apple. It didn't, it didn't start off like this in the beginning, surely. You get one rotten apple, then you get another. And then it becomes like a cancer. And what happens over the years, when people keep dying, they keep bringing the friends in. And it's like a cult, like a mafia, isn't it? John Gotti brought his son in. He ended La Costa up Nostra. Well, that's what it is. It's the same mm -hmm. sort of framework and it's rotten to the core. Do you know what it is? Do you know if you cook a stew and it's rotten? I, know I don't cook rotten food, but Listen, <laughs> everybody's going to get ill. Hey, Carl, let me have four. <laughs> if you cook a stew and it's rotten and you've got all your mates around, Terry, me, and everybody, we're all going to go, Rico, you and your missus have cooked a rotten stew. We're not eating that. <laughs> You've got to get rid of it. It's like treading in dog shit. If you tread it, you've got to get rid of it off your shoe because you walk it in house or your shoe will be smelling all day. You get rid of it because shit leaves stains. Now, these people have been like this, <coughs> like pigs with truffle, truffles, snaffling about for years and years and years. And we all know what happened when Michael Watson got injured, don't we? Who were at fault? Boxing Board of Control. So when boxing fans 
look at Michael Watson. They think, well, that Michael Watson's like that because they didn't have any medical care for him on the night. Who show were it? Barry Hearns. What did he do? He passed the book, did he? Because he did everything to the letter. The blame lies with the boxing board of control. Barry Hearns ran for the hills, the, the, the Hearn Hills. The board of control were in limbo. They had to sell the building and move to a semi in Cardiff to pay Michael Watson. Who helped them out after that? Frank Warren helped them, not old Bazza. He was too busy doing what he was doing. Well, we don't know what he was doing, but it'll come out one day. Point I want to make is these shit houses at Border Control, they're responsible for Michael Watson. And God knows who else. You know what I mean? It, it wants ripping up and starting. It. They want investigating, mate, by proper people. They all want resigning. Border Control, all the lot of you, resign. Because you've been, you've, been, you've been the cause of boxing problems for far too long. These people are where it starts from. If the Boxing Board of Control show no authority, well, what, 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 what's going on? For instance, and I'm not going to have a go at Tommy Frank here because Dennis has pulled a blinder here. Tommy Frank's just been beat, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. so why is he in a British fight, British title fight? It might not be. It might be cancelled, but they, were, they, they, they agreed to let him have a British title fight. How can that be possible off a loss? Does that, so does that open floodgates for everybody else to say, yeah, we'll have a British title fight. We're coming off a loss. And they say, no. They say, well, you did it for him. There's no consistency, Rico. You put a letter of complaint into them about someone, they don't do anything. I know people who have complained, fighters, managers. They don't do sod all, mate. But you get a solicitor's letter to do it. They shit the pants and fill the nappy. They've, they've, they're the board of no control. No, they just put their head in the sand and just carry on with it, mate. You ever see anybody from Boxing Board of Control at a show? You can't see them in between fights because they're in bar, mate. They're yeah. no good. People say, oh, so-and-so and so-and-so is all right at board. They're not all right. They're all like politicians. They're paid to be there on the night. They're walking about getting decent money. They're not even fighting. And they don't fight nobody's corner, mate. They don't listen to criticism. They need outing. It needs ripping up and starting again. And that program tomorrow night, that program, I've been told, is going to open all sorts of cans of worms. Because the it's going to show you that Panorama program. It's on tonight, isn't it? T Monday tomorrow, night, it's on tomorrow, tomorrow night. night. Panorama, Monday night. That'll show you how weak the British Boxing Board of Control is. And I'm saying, listen, I'm not bothered about who promoters are. I'm saying they're the board of no control. Me, Russell Hartley, Porky's Corner. I'm the front man here. I may not have a saying. I, I may I, I get outvoted on a lot of things that happen with this channel because I'm outnumbered. But let me tell you this. I'm fronting this, right? There's no control whatsoever with that board of control. It wants ripping up, starting again. All them people I'm calling for them to resign. And I'm calling for people who want to put money into boxing to come and see me and I'll tell you what the problem is. I'll sit you down in my office, all you big money men who want to come in boxing, and I'll tell you what needs doing. They've got to go. Go now while you still can. Because they're killing the sport. It's setting a precedent for everybody else to do what they want. But when you've got no rules, what have you got? You've got anarchy, haven't you? They're not doing the jobs, mate. They've allowed all these little, they've allowed all these bling belts, I call them. They've allowed all these alphabet soup organisations to dominate them because they get a kickback off it. What happened to area title? English, British, Commonwealth European and them will. What happened to all that? What happened to the, let's just start at the bottom, area English, British. Forget Commonwealth European and will. Area English and British, that's their domain, and yeah, they do have a little yeah. bit of a say on other ones if it's if they're involved on the show in England. The free belts at the bottom, kids are not going that way, they're going continentals and this and that. What about going the Connor Ben's not even fought for a British title and he's world ranked, and he's not the only one. What happened to learning your craft and trying to win a British belt outright? 
showing a bit of class, eh? And having a British title belt at home. What happened to that? Hey, boxing board of control, they're supposed to push that Lonsdale belt. How many Lonsdale belt holders is there in the UK at the moment who are actually sitting on a belt? There isn't that many, mate. What is it, 18 weight divisions now with that bridge weight? How many people have got a belt? How many, how many belts are vacant? What, what are they doing? They're doing sod all, mate. They're just putting their head in sand, they're letting promoters and run, run roughshod over them. And, and, and it's, it's now out of control, mate. Hanging out of the back of promoters for that, for your perks, disgust me. They can't do anything with a bit of passion. They can't do anything that's non-profit making, can they? Hey, do you know what I mean? They can't yeah. put money. They can't. They can't do it. They've got to be paid. They've got to be. It's like all these referees. They're all on fortunes. They're on fortunes, mate. Plus forty-five pence a mile there and back home. If you've got a show in Leeds and you live in London and you're a referee. You drive to Leeds and go home, we've got to get £220 in expense money. I've got this one referee telling this other referee in front of me, oh, I've got 223 quid to come on my petrol expenses, plus hotel tonight, plus after party. We're going for a curry, aren't we, lads? Plus paid on night off promoter. What? And he's got a job as well in day. Free gratis, mate. It's got to stop. We get all these amateur refs to do it for a pittance. They're not yeah, bothered. The motive shouldn't be paying refs. That's like the first conflict of interest. Imagine if Man United was paying the ref in their home games and Liverpool was paying the ref at theirs. I mean, come on. I mean, that's like one-on-one stuff. What about yeah. that copper in Sheffield? That copper who used to ref Man U games. Sheffield oh, copper. Howard Webb. Howard Webb. Howard Webb. Now, Fergie time. Howard fucking Webb. Another video I'm not getting paid for for swearing. Fuck Howard Webb, he's a copper. I'm a Man United supporter, so I don't mind him. But uh, who are? I, I'm a Man United supporter. So are you I don't a Man U fan, Rico? Yeah. You yeah. prick. <laughs> Man U. I didn't, I didn't know you were Man U. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking no. <laughs> Joe, Joe Gallagher's Man U. I know he is. Um, yeah, I think, look, the point you made. I agree completely. But let's think about what is this? Like, it's been, the board's been, this panorama thing come, comes out. The government starts investigating boxing, decides that all the people from the board need to resign. It's a new dawn. Hawk is being put in charge of the board, so you become the new Robert Smith. Uh, what, what, what are the first things you want to do? Well, I've got no, I've got no row down here. First of all, I get rid of a lot of them. Whatever money they've had, consider it severance pay. Take the train and get no, out. No, they the all dodge. gone. They all gone. The government investigation oh, right, finds right. they all gone. Pork is yeah. in charge. Pork is. Right. You get to a point, whoever you want. But what, what are you going to do? Like, what right. are the, right. what well, are well, the well, policies that you're going to do? Right, I'm going to tell you now. Are you listening? Yeah. This is just off cuff. First of all. If you want to fight for a British title, you've got to have had 20 fights for starters. 20. 15 for an English, 10 for an area. You've got to learn your craft. British title fights always have to be on TV. English and area always have to be on TV because you've earned the right after 10, 15, 20 fights to have them fights on TV. You shouldn't be having British title fights not on TV at all. Okay, I've got a question on that point. I think this is an interesting discussion. So what happens if you're an amateur fighter like Joe Joyce that turns over later in their career uh, and they have to have 15 fights? So 15 fights, that could be four years, three, four years, depending on, on a normal year. So you have that. So Joe Joyce turns over... 31 or something. So Joe Joyce, Joe Joyce is 34 by the time he gets the English title and then he's yeah. about 35 by the time he gets British. Tough. Tough shit for Joe Joyce. Either get your manager to get your 10 fights wherever and get 10 wins on board or okay. 15. So tough shit. Shouldn't be turning over at 31. Milking system up at EIS. So, so do we want people to turn over earlier 
Yeah, you've got to turn over early. You can't be turning over at 31. No, but even if you turn over, uh, let's say uh, 28, right? You're still going to be 32 by the time you get there. Ah, oh, cheese. Tough okay. shit. Can't be jumping queue. You can't be milking the system up at EIS till you're 28, 30 year, year old. No, no, we're and not talking about EIS. We're talking about anyone, right? How old was yeah. Proch when Proch turned over? 24, nine months. Okay, so he would have been 27, 28 by the time he got to British level. He was a world champion at 31. How many fights did he have until he fought for the British? I don't know. I know Alan Page after eight, was it? Uh, 14 fights, was it? Charles Adamo, probably 15 fights. Okay. The the other thing is the other thing is that because I just want to discuss these issues. I mean, I, I have to think about more whether I agree with you or not. But I think the problem by setting that cap number high for the fights is that you will end up having a lot of poor fights. So you'll end up having guys that want to fast track to the level. So they'll fight against journeyman after journeyman after journeyman on small hall shows just to get to that number so they can fight for these titles. So well, it doesn't really so it doesn't really so you might have the competitive fight at the British or area level, but it doesn't include but it doesn't mean that you're gonna have competitive fights for those fifteen fights. So you might not be learning much, you might just be fast tracked, lots of fights to get to that level to get to the next step. Okay then Rico, let me just throw this at you. You're trying to you're trying to outdo me on conversation. No, no, I'm not I'm not. I'm just saying Every, every action has ramifications. Okay, then look at it like this. How many people at the moment are stepping up to world level all right, and they're not ready for it and getting flogged? How about we say, how about we say something like this? Unless you fight for the British, you can't fight for a trinket belt, a WBA or other trinket belt, because the trinket belts, what they are effectively is like buying rankings, aren't they? Once you give the sanctioning fee for those, you get ranked high in the governing body. So how about you won't sanction fights for WBA internationals or anything else until you fight for a British title? Even if you lose, after that you can fight for a trinket belt. Listen, mate, all these trinket belts have got to fuck off. I watched an interview with Muhammad Ali and they got on about something and they mentioned Joe Bugner. And you, you can't say that about Joe Bugner. He's the, he's the fourth best heavyweight in the world. He's, that's the old China, Russia, Australia, wherever he's the number four. Whatever happened to when guys used to go back and they were famous and they say, see him over there, he's, he's the fifth best heavyweight in the world. Isn't that better than saying... He's a world champion, he's a world champion, he's an interim champion, he's a continental, and all that shite. Whatever happened to us just having the six belts that I like, all the levels, the six belts, and get rid of all this stuff. And if you want to fight for a WBA, you get in line in rankings. And then when your yeah. chance comes, you fight for it. What happened to that, Rico, eh? I'm not, look, I'm not massively... I'm not too bothered about people working through each level step by step because for some people, they just breeze past the levels and for the others, they just take a bit longer to develop. But what I do think is important is that people have good competitive fights early on in their career so that you don't get guys that have just blown everybody and then they get to like, effectively what they do with Boati, right? With Boati, they're waiting for the right time so they can chuck him into a world title fight. The same happened with Yard. Um, and I think the game has got to that where so many, where the only way to make money is to not fight competitive fights until you get to the world title level. And I think that's the problem. It's not necessarily working through levels. It's the fact that nobody fights competitive fights until they get to world level. It's a very British thing. It's not, it doesn't happen as much in the US where people just get... You know, they fight against nobodies and then get a world title drop, mainly because the promoters will match their own guys against each other in tough positions. Like, it wasn't like Teofimo Lopez came out of nowhere to beat Lomachenko. I mean, he had just beaten, um, what's that guy, Richard Comey, and before that, he had had yeah. some competitive fights. 
Yeah, I can see. I can see that, mate. I can see that. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. And I think the board needs to make. And I agree. Like you know what, you should have a certain amount of fights, but somehow you should try and enforce the fact that people fight for that British, or at least an area level belt before you fight for the British. So, like someone like Conor Ben would have to fight for an area level belt if he wants to go to a British. Right, well, listen to it. Listen to it. I mean, what belt has Conor Ben belt going? Conor Ben going is out on what belt? Some WBA, WBC. He's got a WBA continental and he belt at yeah. home, yeah? Right. That's it. But yeah, he was world ranked number six with WBA. He was higher than Adrian Broner at the time, who was a four weight world champion and earned millions in sport. But Conor Ben, 15 months ago, with WBA number six, won it. Then it, it all yeah. kicked off, didn't it? And then they pulled him out of the top 15. Do you remember? Mm hmm. Parked him up. But how did he get to that number six anyway on the strength of what? Beating kids with losing records. Come on. It's a joke, mate. It's a joke. Yeah, yeah, but I think we have to decide whether we care about governing body rankings or not. Like, I personally don't really care about how. Uh, how highly somebody's ranked in the WBA, WBO, unless they the mandatory challenger, whatever happens underneath that doesn't really matter. Because oh. they are those bodies aren't good at ranking fighters because it's not a good way of ranking fighters where if you're a champion for one governing body, you can't be ranked in another governing body. I mean, there's no sense in that. Yeah. Look, the bottom line is this. The board of control have got to go. Go now, resign, while you've still got a bit of pride. Charlie Giles, Les Potts, Robert Smith, John Reese, and all you shithousers, I'm calling on you to resign. Resign now. Get out of Dodge. Take your paychecks and go. You've been abusing boxing for years. I mean, what we're going to have next? Their they're, they're offspring in, in, working at Border Control. Probably it's wrong, not. mate. Shit houses, mate. Shit houses. What I'm saying, license holders agree with. They all agree yeah. with me, but they can't say it because they've got a board license. I aren't, so fuck off. It's as simple as that. Fuck right off the, the Border Control. Let's get a new board in. From bottom to top. Because otherwise the sport's going to be heading for skid row, mate. Skiddy row. That's what I think anyway, Rico. I think it's got to start from there. And then TV companies like Sky have got to... They've got to stop pushing this shite. I'm sick of seeing Adam Smith going on YouTube channels, the selected few. We know which ones he goes on, don't we? I'll give you them. For those of you that don't know, IFL, Boxing Social, Behind the Gloves, Fight Hype and Seconds Out, the big five we call them. Yeah. Hard, hard working job. Then people who do all that, they're very hard working, but they're bothered about views. They're not bothered about the fucking sport like we are. They're not bothered about it. If they were bothered about the sport, they'd be asking Eddie Hearn about fucking stubble or they'd be putting it on the board constantly. Or they'd be saying, why do we not get these fights? Fans want to know why we don't get these fights, why we have to wait, why it's all some big fucking drawn-out job all the time for years. They'd be asking questions like that, but then they'd lose their access. You've got a public here that are fucking silenced. The media have been silenced because they know they'll be out of the circle. They didn't ask the fucking questions. Who's asked Tyson Fury about this seven million to charity? Coogan asked him, but he was shut down, wasn't he? But Coogan only asked and said he hadn't fucking told him to, and he didn't yeah. want her. He was in the middle. Oh, fucking hell, Eddie. Now you've got to ask him. He didn't want her. <coughs> so he was shut down. <clears throat> Nobody's asking about Dylan White's B sample. I mean, where the fuck is his B sample? If I piss in this now and then we pour it into two bottles, one bottle comes back positive, 
that they tried to shut up. Where's the fucking other bottle? What are we on now? 530 fucking days? It's a fucking joke. Nobody's asking these questions, are they? Nobody's asking fuck all. It's unbelievable, mate. It's unbelievable. It's got to start from the board setting a precedence and that'll rifle through. And if the board say, no, we're not sanctioning that, we don't like that, oh, you're going to get this piss test sorted properly. You can the board, TV companies and promoters, all shit in the same pot. They all want, you can want pain. Fucking board want pain, don't they? Promoters definitely want pain. And TV companies do. Look at the shite pay-per-views we've got. Shite, shite, shite. Fucking hell, the Dylan White against Pavetkin. Fucking hell, not. Dylan White's in his sixth pay-per-view in his next, and he hasn't fought for a fucking European title yet. They mind a world title. He's in his sixth fucking pay-per-view. What the fuck? Are we having a laugh? Are we having a laugh here? Pavetkin's 42 in September. He can't go fucking eight rounds without blowing out his arse. I mean... Am I, am I a fucking lollipop here, Rico? Pavetkin's the same age as Eddie, Eddie Hills. Pro, yeah, it's like Eddie Hill. Doesn't have as good as a record, though, because Eddie Hills is an undefeated uh, knockout artist. Hey, listen, I saw Eddie the other day, right? He looked like he's got a wig on. <laughs> I said it, he looked like he... He must be... He, Eddie, you know, Eddie looks like he's combing it over from his fucking back. Now, <laughs> he must have an hairy back. He can't look it now. Shave it all off, Eddie. Be like me. Hey, Rico, do you reckon I should get an air transplant? Uh, I think it would be quite funny if you got one that was exactly like Eddie's. Imagine that. I get an Eddie. <laughs> yeah. Imagine me with an air transplant. Could you even imagine? I've not had air since I was 30. Could you imagine me with fucking air? Look, right, cunt, wouldn't I? Nah, I don't think. I don't think. You know what? We love you. We love your hats, Porky. You just. You just keep on wearing those hats, right? Hey, this is a Ted Baker. This Dennis got me it. In fact, I think Dennis got me this as well. Yeah, he did. Don't come on to this. Go on, Den, getting me a coat. <laughs> so I'm still going to hammer you, though, Den. If first, first mistake I see you making boxing, Den, I'm going to roast you on my channel. But now, uh, listen, mate, this is how I look at it, right? The board are no control. They must resign. We need new people in. UCAD need to sort themselves. I mean, are they even doing drug testing at the moment? I'm not so sure. Nobody well, seems they to don't be... do. They don't do just boxing drug test, testing, but UCAD's a pretty lousy organisation. I don't think anybody can take them seriously. So, so uh, UCAD, even if, even if they were doing drug testing, would that matter? Do they catch anyone? Well, this is how I look at it, right? UCAD, fuck off. You're no good. Board of control, fuck off. Sky, sort your act out. Adam Smith, you must resign because you are the dungeon master. You, you are the Dennis Nielsen of boxing. You've got to resign, Adam, because you're scary. He's got to go. And all them bean masons around him, all them all fucking gone, mate, now. They're all looking after the mates. It's fucking jobs for boys. Fuck off, all them. And let's have a clean slate. Let's have a clean slate with people... Running boxing board of control, retired businessmen who've got a few quid and, and, and who want to be neutral or are not in everybody's camp. Uh, by camp, I mean, we know we all know that there's certain people at boxing board of control who like to go to people's houses for a drink and out for dinner and playing golf and all that. You wouldn't get that with FA, would you? Would FA be playing golf with Klopp and and Guardiola or whatever his name? What's his name? Is? No, because if they were, the media would report him. See, there's a there's a job for the media. The media's job is to hold people to account and be objective. Oh. If if said promoter was playing golf with Charlie Giles and Les Potts and Robert Smith, okay, would, Les Potts. Any, would anybody? Report it. Would anybody make a big deal of it? I would. No, but would anybody in the mainstream media make a big deal of it? No, yeah, would they? What fucking Ron Lewis? Ron Lewis, uh, Oliver. What, what what are they called? Oliver Alt. Oliver Alt. Ron Lewis. They were all big hitters. Colin yeah, yeah. fucking Art with his wig. 
what, what, what would call it? Listen, they're not going to do fuck all these people because they all want access. Only person in media who stood up to these powerful promoters over years, Steve Bunce. Steve Bunce stuck, got stuck into Barry Yearn and, and, and Barry Yearn didn't like it. So he yeah, but that stuck. was decades ago. No, I know, no, I don't know. It wasn't that long ago. Steve Bunce and Barry Yearn don't get on. Steve Bunce told him what he thought and Barry Yearn didn't give him any work. Who other one? Mickey Duff. Mickey Duff banned him for two and a half years, Bunce. Bunce, I'll tell you how much Bunce loves his boxing. I'm not just saying this because I like him and I've had a night out with him. He's a top bloke, Bunce, but I've had a few nights out with Bunce. Bunce paid his own ticket to go to press conferences around the world for over two and a half years. How's about that? Nobody said to Bunce, oh, we're going to buy your ticket. Nobody. He paid his own way to go to these presses, right? How many of these others do that? You don't, mate. Well, Bunsy has all the intel and info and everything that goes on in boxing, right? He has a platform on his BBC podcast, yeah. and he isn't calling the stuff out. He isn't criticising the pay-per-views. He isn't criticising the quality of shows. If anything, he's saying British boxing is good. If anybody on Twitter says anything against it, he'll just tell them to do one. So, yes, he might have been, you know... A bit different years ago, but these days he's pretty much turned the company line. He has a BBC podcast. The BBC has a deal to broadcast matchroom shows on BBC Radio 5 Live, which he commentates on. So he's exactly like everybody else. I understand why people in boxing don't call this stuff out because they've got jobs, they've got, you know, families to feed and rent to pay. But I don't think anybody should be held on a pedestal for what they have done. I mean, hats off to Panorama for doing this thing. I, I, none of us have seen it yet. It might be good. It might be not so good. But you know what? Hats off to BBC Panorama for doing it. Somebody had to look into it at some point. Yeah. Well, Channel 4 were going to do it, weren't they? But they yeah. fucking shit the pants, didn't they? Well, um, yeah, I mean, don't go, don't we, mention we any names. About, we can, yeah, we can talk about it offline. There, there was other complications on that, but yeah. But the point I want to make is if BBC are coming down on you, there's problems, isn't there? The thing about Panorama is a lot of people in politics watch it, and a lot of people in politics love to find a little hobby horse who they can haul in front of the select committee and ask them tough questions because it makes them look good. And boxing's quite an easy one to pick because not many people like boxing. So I think it's not only the show that's the problem and the worry for the board and MTK and others, it's the fact that other people jump on the bandwagon. So you might have media writing articles about it and looking into it more. You might have politicians looking at it more, which I think is a good thing, right? Yeah, I I do. I think it's a positive thing. But let's hope it has the same reaction that you often have in some of these panorama things. Like, you remember the whole care homes thing? When there was videos of people being mistreated at care homes, older people, you know, scumbags yeah. doing that. So, you know, that caused, obviously, a lot of these care homes, CEOs and others to have to explain themselves to politicians and explain what they're going to put in place. And if this boxing thing is exclo- explosive and it's particularly bad on the board... Hopefully, it will mean that all these guys will be hauled in front of politicians to explain why they haven't looked into, why they don't have more governance, why they've been doing a crap job. So the board will be shitting themselves today, knowing this is coming out tomorrow. Right, what about moving on from the adventures of fucking Tintin, Charlie Giles, and all his merry men at the board, Robert Smith. Robert Smith, you're a shithouse, come see me. Yeah, you. Yeah, you, Robert Smith, you. Come and see me, you shit house. Just because a few people said something about a referee at a show. Were it Terry O'Connor? Terry O'Connor, get mm. to fucking Specsavers. They've got a sale on, you blind cunt. Right. Uh, the moving on from them shit houses, it's a cesspit. I've come from one cesspit, then I've got into boxing. It's a bigger cesspit than what I were involved in, but that's another story, but 
Eddie Earns, Dazone bollocks, Sky bollocks, Matchroom, Utter bollocks. We're going for fucking Tourette's today, aren't we? Fucking hell. This is what it does. You're probably going to end up paying. You're probably going to end up paying for this video. Like every time you swear, it's like minus five pounds. You're going to have. You're going to end up paying twenty quid to put this video out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've got. I get Tourette's. But this is what boxing does to me because I'm so passionate. I just, I just want to watch. You have that. a, you're gonna have a belly in tomorrow, aren't you? In your mouth, a little belly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Davy Day has been touted about as the front man for Sky if they get rid of Eddie Earn or if Eddie goes his own. Well, way. touted by Terry, right? Our friend Terry has touted this. There's yes. a couple of other people that have mentioned it to me as well about they could see David A, because uh, he's a bit of a mouthpiece, isn't he? He's got plenty of rattle, hasn't he? Yeah. I mean, look, there's. I think there's often a perception that everything in boxing has to be done the way it has been done before, that like you need a front man. Effectively, it depends what Sky do what they chose. You know, if they distribute it between different promoters, you might have Calais doing his shows. If they do, you might have someone like in Leeds and from MTK doing the MTK shows. You might have Eddie for Matchroom doing the Matchroom, but I don't think you necessarily need a front man to do everything for Sky. And that front man is always the person that's the head of boxing. So... When it's showtime, right? You might have Steven Espinosa that does when they have the fights will big up from a network perspective. I don't see what David's role would be. He doesn't have any fighters. Can you see David's actually like let's give Eddie his credit, right? The the guy works hard. The guy does a lot of deals, he does a lot of shows. Whether you think that his shows are good or bad, he does all the graft. Can you see David Hay doing the same graft? Or does he just turn up at the press conferences in a nice suit for the photo ops? Like Sky doesn't need that. You don't need a Davis Hay to be the front man and tell boxing fans to buy Sky pay-per-views when you have the promoters that promote the fighters do that best. Because there won't be a Sky stable, will there? Sky no. aren't a manager or promoter, so they won't sign fighters. So what's David's role? I don't see, I just personally don't see that happening. Right, well, let me just tell you, right, this is what I, if it does happen, David Hayes ain't got many fighters, has he? But if he was... Does he have any? Right, I'm not sure, but if he was given... I don't given, think he does. If he were given the role, right, at Sky, to front these shows out, he could be like a supplier of fighters, couldn't he? And, you know, like a middle management sort of thing. So I'm not sure, but MCK probably could do a better job, couldn't they? But and employ him as the front man, you know, to do the YouTube interviews all because that's what that's what way boxing is going now, isn't it? Well, look at it this way: Why would you pay David Hay to? Like, can you trust David Hay to do anything properly? Like, let's be honest. I won't trust him, Rico. As far as I can throw him, and that's not very far. I wouldn't trust yeah. him one bit. He's a born liar. He's a con man. Uh, we, we saw what he was serving up when he fought Bellew twice. When I realised he was a con man, Davy Day, he was running up some stairs in London, do it, you know, steps. Yeah. And he pulled his arm, didn't he, or something, shoulder or something, didn't he? Yeah. He got injured. And he rung Eddie Earn up with Eddie Earn and said, well, I'll see you at the office. He was there an hour before Eddie Earn got there with begging bowl because he knew he had to go cap in hand because he, he was held together by Papa Mache, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. And he conned the public, putting videos out every day, doing twists and stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. He's eating kangaroo meat now! <laughs> We heard all that one, didn't we? Kangaroo we meat did. and quicker than a fucking rifle's, rifleman's bullet. We've heard that and I'm stronger, I'm maturer, I'm seasoned. Kept using that seasoned and a more durable and added spice, sizzling. They come all out action with it. as well. All, all action. action. All action. Dave Allen. All action. Dave Allen is all action as well as durable and gay. Listen, all you boxing fans out there, when you're watching a fight... And the Saints at Pundits, who do you think's going to win? And they turn around and they say, well, Dave Allen's game and he's durable and he's really up for this. 
or Eric Molina. I've just seen Eric Molina on pads, Coogan. I've got a squeaky bum. He's really up for it. His game is durable. When they start saying that, put your money on other guys to knock him out. David A knew that, but he got, because of his social media platform, he's basically a YouTube fighter. He got two bites at the cherry. After refusing two fights with Fury because of, in, because of injury, and then going into wilderness all them years. What, is he going to come back for pay-per-view and do that to us twice? He'll do it again! Well, uh, he'll, yeah. he'll, he'll do it again to beat Foreman's record. He'll be back. What is he, 41 now? Something like that. 41 this October, because he's 10 year, 10 year to the day, and he's younger than me. Right? So he'll be back soon, and he'll be saying, well, George Foreman did it in his 40s. Bernard Hopkins went on while they were 50-odd. They'll start getting it all up. Mark my word. Because some people just can't leave it alone, and he's one of them. He is one of them. He's up his own. If he were about a chocolate, he'd eat himself, wouldn't he? I don't like him anyway. I think he's a shit house. David A, come see me, shit house. Yeah, I think the final point of that, before I go get some lunch, is that I don't think networks need... Like, you can't... As a as a management company or promoter, MTK or whether that be Sowlands, you're not going to give your fighter for the network to do the promotion. It's your job to do the promotion. Uh, so I just don't see it happening. I don't see Sky getting a front man and then getting all these fighters on Sky contracts. What they'll do if they go a different way from Eddie Hearn is they'll just buy shows, like a few shows, or they might have like, Give Sowland three shows, give MTK five shows, give Matchroom five shows, and then those guys will promote it. So it's back to the old way when they had all those multiple promoters rather than saying this guy does the promotion uh, or for all the Sky shows because promoters aren't going to agree to that. Yeah. How do you see Eddie Hearn sitting on the sidelines when David Hayes talking about his fighters? He won't be able to handle it, would he? Because Eddie likes to be in control, isn't he? The control freak, isn't he? Control freak. Exactly. He has to control the narrative. He, he, as soon as he gets up in the morning, somebody has to be there filming him. He's obs- The man is obsessed. He's obsessed, mate. He's obsessed. I mean, God knows how, much, how long he spends with his family, but he's obsessed, isn't he? He can say he's driven he's and all relentless. that. But he's relentless. It's a relentless people come back from adversity. He hasn't had any adversity in his life, has he? He's had everything done for him. He still wears a nappy, doesn't he? You know what I mean? He's had everything done for him. When I see him come through some adversity, that's when I'll say he's relentless. When I see him come back from something. You know, let's you know see. who's relentless? Frank Warren. That's, just, that's actually a relentless. Frank thing. Warren's more relentless than any year. He's from a council estate and he's done good. And he's been shot... He's been ill, he's had cancer or whatever. He's had uh, he's been he's bankrupt, bankrupt a few times, and he? he's had all sorts of problems. He's had problems with that box nation and blah blah blah. And hey, let me tell you this you know, that box nation that might just be his crown jewel moving down the road soon. That might that might be needed down the line, that mate. I'm telling you now. So, all them people going, eh, box nation, load of crap. Let me tell you this. They cost millions to put up. They had to put millions up to do that. That might be his saving grace down the line, Frank, because so, sooner or later, BT Sport will pull plug on him, won't they? Because everybody has always worked with, haven't they? Mm-hmm. Leopards don't change the spots, don't we? Frank's a creature of habit, just like humans. So that box nation might be his saving grace soon, and he might just say, do you know what? I'm going to start from bottom. With brand new kids and build up, and in five years I'll pluck them all. And he might just need to just go back to the very beginning and start again, because if he'd have done this five years ago when he were in a lot of trouble, he might have been all right. But he hadn't. He got BT on board, and he's hung in there, and he's fight. He's always on ropes, isn't he? But he's the original comeback kid, Frank Warren. So don't write him off just yet. Don't write him off. He, he'll be plotting behind the scenes. But as regards Hearn, you're a shit house. He's a shit house, Hearn. He's had it all his own way, and I want to see him go through some adversity. That's all I want to see. Show a bit of humility. But these YouTubers have got access to him. Hang your fucking heads in shame. 
putting your tongue up Eddie Hearn's fucking arsehole. He shits out that arsehole. Rinse your mouth out with TCP fucking all on yours. You're getting access. You're not asking fucking questions. You're being told what to fucking say. I'm calling on all boxing fans to unsubscribe from these shithouse YouTube channels. IFL, Boxing Social, Behind the Gloves, Fight Item and Seconds Out. All lot on your shithouses. Pushing the same fucking narrative. Ask some proper fucking questions. Is that all right for you, Rico? All right, on that note, I'm going to go get some lunch. I think that was a strong ending. Strong ending. We've gone balls deep today. No fucking about. We're just sick of all this shit. We're going to save boxing. Peace out. And we'll look forward to tomorrow's documentary. Everybody tune in. Tune in, Panorama, 8 o'clock, BBC One. Paul's going to have his popcorn ready, aren't you? I'll be there with popcorn, hoping that they put fucking jo Robert Smith and uh, we're going to say Johnny Giles and he's Leeds United, isn't he? What's his fucking... Uh, Charlie. Charlie fucking Giles on a spit roast with a fucking apple in his mouth. Well, you know what? We'll uh, discuss that next week. We'll discuss the episode in more detail. All right, Enrico, you take Keep care. Talking. Keep sporting boxing. Don't have nightmares. <laughs> All right, mate. Take Peace care. out. Speak Speak to you soon. Bye. Right. Well, that was my uh, good friend Rico. Uh, sorry about the swearing today, but once you've swore, you don't get your 50p. So I might as well carry on swearing and I get my 50p's worth. But sometimes I get so frustrated with what's going on in boxing because there's so many people involved in the cesspit of the sport of boxing. I feel like I have to point this out. And like I keep saying, if anybody has a problem, come see me. I'm not hard to find. Oh, only seven calls. So Friday, it's usually 40 odd. So come see me if anybody's got a problem. All right, come see me and we can have a debate. I'll sit you there, give you the cuppa, and we'll put other camera on, not this one, other one. And let's see what you've got to say. If not, what's the point in you in you leaving a shitty little text on my YouTube channel and then fucking deleting it? What's the point of that? Because I still get to see them even if you delete it. It comes up on something else that we've got. It's like going and knocking on somebody's door and running away. I used to do that when I was fucking nine. All right. So that's about it, really. I don't think there's anything else I wanted to point out, will there? Uh, Callum, Prant, Callum Prant won against Truex, did he, Bob Points? So maybe that's a better fight, Arlie Marshall says. Uh, maybe that's a better fight for Canelo than Billy Joe. I don't know. I don't know, but we're going to see, aren't we, if Billy Joe can do the business in May. We've got three months to go. So fight week, so all right. So have a good Sunday. It's ten past twelve. Let's see if we can get this out for one o'clock. Peace out.